Neil? If I'm to understand uh, some of the incentive of this effort is to reflect on whether uh, one can account, you didn't say this explicitly, but it's deeply implicit in this whole conversation, whether one can account for, uh, um, uh, for example, the belief in a personal God as the sole consequence of activity in the brain rather than as there actually being a personal God that's out there. And uh, getting back to the comment made by the gentleman from the Templeton Foundation. Charles Harper. Yeah. Charles, hi. Hello. Um, I, I think there is, in fact, uh, there are, in fact, tests. You said, is there a shred of scientific evidence that refutes the personal God? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's the essence of your point. Um, I think there are tests that have been conducted, but they just weren't thought of in the way that you posed the question. For example, most people who would claim a personal God would claim that that God answers prayers. So you can do prayer studies and ask, is what you prayed for under these controlled cir circumstances replied to, uh, responded to in whatever way you had hoped in your prayers? And from my read of prayer studies, they consistently come up negative when they're done in a controlled way. And when people believe they're being re responded to, it's because they've removed the, the, they only remember the hits and not the misses. Uh, but not only that, there's, I think there's an even bigger case here. And it's summarized simply in the images of the pale blue dot. Um, one wouldn't call this a scientific experiment, but it's a scientific sort of plausibility statement. Because as you ascend from the Earth and look at our temporal, spatial, and organizational uh, uh, insignificance in terms of the scale of the cosmos, if you're going to say that the same person who made the cosmos cares about your life on this Earth, the bigger we know the cosmos to be, the more of an expression of hubris or ego that that represents. And then you, you end up drifting away from the idea that the person who made the universe cares about your prayers. And so it's a, it's a plausibility argument. It's, I wouldn't call it a scientific experiment. But in science, you always have to make a judgment as to what is sensible given the information and what is not. And the bigger is the universe, the less sensible a personal God seems. And I just want to get back to the opening remark that as you said, most people here would not agree to a personal God, even if there was some sensitivity to a God of initial uh, force. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. And in fact, the uh, most famous example of that experiment of prayer is the one conducted by Francis Galton, who was a cousin of Charles Darwin, who said, well, let's do the simple version of this experiment. Most people in England pray for the king and the queen. You know, God save the king. Long live the king and queen. And then he's found that the average lifespan of the king and queen actually is lower than the general population. So, so he said this obviously disproves the hypothesis. But on the other hand, the counter argument to that is many people say, well, they were not being sincere when they prayed, when they said God. So, so it goes on. You know.